First step in getting started with Market System Analyzer is to compile your trade data into a text file. A text file is any file format that can be opened in a simple typing program or word processing program such as Notepad or WordPad. Here I'm showing a sample trade file opened in WordPad. There's basically one trade per line and the different columns of data represent the different uh, parts of the trade such as the entry date and time, entry price, exit date, exit price. Here we have the optional stop price which tells us the risk of the trade. This column is the uh, trade direction long or short and then I have a profit loss amount for the trade here as well as the trade risk per in this case contract. Not all these data are necessary to describe a trade for example. All you really need is the profit loss amount for each trade and the size of the trade that corresponds to that profit loss amount. Optionally you can use the entry price, the exit price and the trade direction long or short. If you don't have the trade direction the program will assume that they're all long trades. So once you have the trade data you can open the program. Here we're still in trial mode. And open a new market system file like we have here and then go to the trades menu and select data source. This is where we select that trade data. So let's change the file type to .txt and here's our sample trade data file. Just double click on that and that brings it into this window called the trades file format window. This is where you tell the program what data you want to read in and what format it's in and what it represents. So for example this first column is the entry date so we click on that column and select entry date. Here we have the entry price, exit date time, the exit price, and here's our stop price. We also have the trade direction, long or short, the profit loss amount, and the risk amount. That's really all I want to read in for now. We also note that there's two lines here that we don't need. We can skip over those by selecting this checkbox and entering 2. Now this is a text file so it's already tab limited and it, it defaults to tab delimiter when it reads a .txt file. You can also read files that are comma delimited or space delimited or delimited with semicolons. We don't need to read these other columns and we can uh, just select the columns we want to read in. There are predefined column formats for certain types of files such as a uh, trades list sheet from a trade station performance report and if you use the included write trades function for trade station it will write out data in a particular format that you can pre-select as well. Now here all our data is in US number uh, and date formats. We're going to keep this under English. If you had a, a European or other format you could select that here. Now we just select OK and it's going to read the data from this file. So we select OK again and it reads the data into the program. We can take a look at our data by going to the trades menu and selecting edit add trades. This is the trade editor in the program. This just shows you what that input data look like. Uh, you can double click on one to bring it up into the into the edit window and scroll through the different trades that way. You can see that all the trade data has been read into the program. So after you get to that into the program, the first thing you want to do is go to setup and tell the program what that data represents. So in this case it's futures data. I'm going to select futures. The other option is stocks. With futures we also need to add a point value. This is the number that's multiplied by the, the prices to convert price differences to a profit loss amount. And with stocks it assumes a point value of 1 so that's not necessary. 
Now there's two ways to interpret input data and use it to calculate trades. We can either have the program read the profit loss and risk amounts. Those are the, the dollar values that we, we read in for the profit loss amount and the risk amount for each trade. Or we can have it calculate those values based on the prices. In this case we'll just use the profit loss amounts. You can also enter our default trade size. We'll keep that at one contract because we didn't enter trade size values in the input data. That's used to interpret the profit loss amount so it knows that each profit loss value corresponds to, in this case, one contract. There are some optional check boxes down here. If your profit loss data include trading costs such as the slippage and commissions and fees, you could check this box. If you're using price data and those prices include slippage, you would check this box. So now let's go to the account settings tab and enter a value for our starting account size. This is the value of equity in your trading account at the beginning of the simulation. It uses a default value that it calculates from the, the uh, maximum drawdown. But in this case, let's just enter our own value. And we can set a limit on the maximum possible contracts to trade. And again, you want to select the locale for your trading account. In this case, it's just uh, US dollars. For futures, we'd also enter the margin amount per contract. If this were stocks, under account settings, you'd have a minimum margin requirement in percentage, such as 50% for 2 to 1 leverage in a margin account. Or 100%, which means no leverage. You're you're paying exactly what it it uh, the position costs, or what the position is valued. <clears throat> you can also enter your slippage for stocks on a per side basis, either per per share or per trade, and the same with the commissions and fees. There are a few optional position sizing settings you might want to make. For example, I usually like to set this first checkbox which says no skip trades. It'll trade at least in this case one contract regardless of the position size calculated from the position sizing rules. Just make sure that you don't skip any trades regardless of how low your equity gets except if you you have too little equity based on the uh, margin requirements to take the trade. It's also an option to trade a certain minimum number of shares or contracts until your equity reaches a certain value. So if you if you only only want to trade one contract until your account reaches thirty thousand dollars, you would check this box. For stock trading, it's often a good idea to use this option to trade and say uh, units of a hundred shares per trade. So you'd be trading basically in round lots. Okay, so we've made some options and set our input data and account settings. Click OK. And now it's just trading with uh, no position sizing. If you look in the, the pane, right hand pane over here it says none is the position sizing method and it's taking the number of contracts directly from the input data which in this case defaults to one contract for each trade. And you can see that here there's a position size of one for each of these trades, which is also shown in this uh, subgraph here. So the next thing we'd probably do is start to look at different position sizing methods. And we can select those from the position sizing menu. For example, let's try a fixed fractional position sizing method where we'll risk, uh, let's try 5% of account equity per trade. And then you can see how it now changes the position size with each trade and when you're doing uh, most of these position sizing methods you typically want to have a logarithmic plotting that's because you're compounding your profits and when you compound profits in this manner you, you would uh, you rather plot it with a logarithmic scale not in, in that case equal returns across different periods will, will uh, plot with a straight line on a logarithmic scale.